Now at 5, the massive red line project downtown is almost finished. Working for you, we show you what you're going to have to do to navigate the streets. When the weather's this beautiful, the number one question is, how long will it last? We'll talk about that coming up. And take a good look at this man. He is a person of interest in an alleged sexual assault on an Indiana trail. What you have to know and how you can help police. This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. First at 5, it is almost ready. The launch of Indigo's Red Line is now just weeks away, and it's already starting to take shape. And it will make the traffic patterns look a little different for you. RTV6 reporter Cameron Riddle joins us live tonight from Capitol Avenue with a quick course on how to get ready for the Red Line. Cameron. Amanda, good evening. A bus driving the wrong way on Capitol Avenue is a sight I certainly hope you have not seen, but it is a sight you better get used to because as Indy's new rapid transit line starts to take shape, it is changing the way we drive. It has been years in the making now and Indigo's red line is finally starting to come through fruition and it is taking, uh, making some differences that is changing parking and traffic patterns from 66th Street and Broadway to the University of Indianapolis on the south side. The rapid transit line brings big changes to traffic patterns on several Indianapolis streets, including College and Capitol Avenues, as well as 38th and Meridian Streets. Among the new changes are bright red bus-only lanes that drivers will have to avoid. So the solid red lines are for the buses only. Those are primarily on College and on Meridian, and then on Capitol as well. And then there are red and black hashed lines. So those are bus and turn. So primarily for the buses, unless a driver is making a right or left-hand turn. And right here at 14th and Meridian is an example of those solid red lines and then the striped broken red and black lines. If you would like to see a tutorial on more of this up and close between now and the red lines launch in September, we have tutorial videos on our website, theandychannel.com, and on the RTV6 app. We're live working for you. I'm Cameron Ruddle. RTV6. Thanks, Cameron. A lot of new things to get used to there. If you ever see an issue with traffic and it could affect the safety of drivers, let us know. Contact us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. This is a live look over downtown Indianapolis from the RTV6 Salesforce Tower camera. And what a beautiful Indiana evening and temperatures are nearly perfect. I mean, Kevin, Everyone needs to just take a walk outside Are today. Are you saying Enjoy you, could get, it. you could get used to this? I could get used to this. This yeah. is very nice, especially after this weekend. And uh, get used to it because next several days will be pretty much like this. We'll have a gradual warming trend. I'll show you one little area where we're trying to crash the party, though. 53, that was this morning in Peru. 54 in Lafayette. In many spots, this was the coolest morning in 31 days. How about that? That was this morning. You've warmed 27 degrees from morning low to afternoon high in Lafayette. It's 80 in Peru, 79 in Indianapolis right now. We've been up to 81. This is what I'm talking about, trying to break into the sunshine party in northwest Indiana. A couple of isolated showers, Benton County, and then just to the northwest of Williamsport and Attica. These may continue to slide to the south, but once we lose any heating, they'll disappear. They're very isolated. Mostly clear for the rest of us. Temperatures destined for the 50s again. By 10 o'clock tonight, 71. The wind will be light and temperatures. Temperatures oh so comfortable with that low humidity. Some renewed hope for people living in a public housing apartment building in Muncie. Power has been going in and out there for weeks, and the CEO of Muncie Housing Authority now tells us that total power could be restored to Gillespie Tower near downtown Muncie in three to five days. The power has been intermittent since July 5th and lapsed again July 18th. Instead of sending parts in for repair, Sydney Electric began work to install a panel which should restore power faster. Fire officials have inspected the extension cords used for refrigerators and fans in the building and say it is safe. And there will be a private memorial service for a mother and her twin daughters who were killed in a crash on I-465 earlier this month. Bishop Robert Peterson of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints says the memorial service for Alana, June, and Ruby Coons will be limited to family and friends. 29-year-old Alana Coons and her 18-month-old twin daughters, Ruby and June, died July 14th when a semi slammed into stop traffic on I-465 in a construction zone near Keystone Avenue.
Bishop Peterson released this statement, quote, to all of us and Alana and Joey's families are profoundly touched by the tremendous outpouring of love, kindness and respect from our friends and loved ones, members of the public and the media in the wake of this tragic accident. We pray for physical and emotional healing for everyone involved, end quote. And you can express your condolences to the family by sending an email to coonsmemories at gmail.com. A man is dead after a motorcycle and an SUV collided in a fiery crash in Anderson earlier this morning. The incident happened at the intersection of West 25th Street and Rabel Avenue just before 6.30 a.m. Anderson police say the crash involved an SUV and a motorcycle which caught fire after the collision. Indiana State Police say the driver of the motorcycle, 23-year-old Chase M. Kumkowski, died at the scene. The driver of the SUV is expected to recover. Troopers say speed and reckless operation of the motorcycle contributed to the cause of that crash. Peyton Manning's Children's Hospital at St. Vincent now has more money to continue its fight against pediatric cancer. Today, Hyundai Hope on Wheels awarded a $100,000 grant to Peyton Manning Children's Hospital. Every 36 minutes, a child in the United States is diagnosed with pediatric cancer. There are 15,000 new cases each year. A Peyton Manning Children's Hospital alum and pediatric cancer survivor talks about his experience at the hospital. They help me tremendously. The hospital itself, all the doctors and nurses are just super nice and they, you really feel like a second family here. And I actually got to meet Peyton Manning one day and uh, it was actually the day I found out I had to have surgery on my right leg. I had to have my femur replaced and knee replaced with titanium. And he was just, it was really cool because he was a very down to earth person and it was really nice meeting him. The hope is the $100,000 grant can help to better treat pediatric cancer here in central Indiana. Are you ready for some football? Colts training camp begins in less than 48 hours at Grand Park in Westfield. And there's, there are some high expectations for the team this season. RTV6 Sports Brad Brown is at Grand Park with a look at what you can expect at training camp this year. Brad. Final preparations are underway here at Grand Park as the Colts get set to kick off their first practice at training camp on Thursday afternoon. The lessons learned from last year have given the folks here in Westfield an opportunity to make the fan experience even better in 2019. Number one, the mobilization for the team, and then perhaps most importantly uh, for fan interaction, we've moved Colt City closer to the stands. Uh, we've made the uh, distance of walking from the parking lot to the stand a little bit shorter. While most NFL teams are holding just one or two open practice sessions this summer, the Colts will open things up for the duration of their three-week training camp. Grand Park has turned out to be a perfect fit for this big endeavor. Certainly supporting an NFL team is not uh, the same as supporting a, a, a youth soccer club, but there's a lot of similarities that we've employed with that, and our staff is second to none. They're energized, they're ready to go, and our volunteers that have come out, we're ready to welcome the fans uh, starting Thursday. Hundreds of people will be donating their time to make sure things run smoothly from all aspects. They love interacting with the guests. So they get to meet people from all over the U.S., people who come out to camp, not just locally, obviously, but we have a lot of fans all over the U.S. It's a year-long endeavor. So as soon as uh, this, this breaks down, we'll start all over again and get ready to uh, launch. And it's quite frankly, it's, it's hard to believe that it's already here again. <laughs> Tickets to training camp are free. Fans need to go online, though, to download those. The Colts will also be using their game day clear bag policy for security here, though. You can find those details online as well. Coming up tonight on the News at 6, what's new at training camp this year? They've made a few changes to make the fan experience even better. We'll tell you about those later this evening. Working for you in Westfield, Brad Brown, RTV6 Sports. Thanks, Brad. And still ahead at 530 on RTV6, the push to save thousands of animals used in government testing. The current process that many are appalled by and the act of Congress that could change everything. But first, a violent crime reported on a central Indiana trail. Now police are asking for your help identifying this man. Kevin. And we showed you some rain. It's isolated, but it's there just to the northwest of Williamsport. This is between Fowler and Williamsport. Talk about where that's headed tonight and then the changes that slowly arrive in the seven-day plan. Ways to save and get smart. 
New at 5, police from West Lafayette have released surveillance video of a person of interest in an alleged sexual assault on the Wabash Heritage Trail system, and officers need your help finding him. A woman told West Lafayette Police Department officers that someone sexually assaulted her around 1145 Saturday morning on the trail near the wastewater treatment plant in West Lafayette. And police say the man on your screen could be connected to that alleged sexual assault. Take a good look at this man. If you recognize him, call police right away. And new information is emerging following a stabbing on the IU Bloomington campus earlier this month. On July 12th, IU police issued an emergency alert about a person with a knife on campus. A 13-year-old girl from Florida attending summer music camp had been stabbed inside Merrill Hall. Police arrested a 17-year-old boy who lives in Bloomington. And now, according to Monroe County court documents, the 17-year-old has been charged as an adult. Dongwook Ko is charged with attempted murder, aggravated battery, kidnapping, and strangulation. Investigators say Ko allegedly lured the girl to a locker room in Merrill Hall, where he is accused of using a knife to stab and cut her. Police say they believe Ko also tried to strangle the girl. According to officers, Ko and the victim know each other. And in less than 24 hours, Robert Mueller will deliver highly anticipated testimony on Capitol Hill. The former special counsel will go before two congressional committees in cooperation with a subpoena. He is expected to talk about his probe into Russian meddling in the 2016 election. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi is in Washington with a look at what Mueller is expected to say. You swear that the testimony. The political not. stakes are high ahead of Robert Mueller's highly anticipated testimony before two congressional committees Wednesday. Bob Mueller is going to have an opportunity to explain this report in his own words. Democrats have been pushing for this testimony since Mueller wrapped up his nearly two year long investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election in March. A couple of months later, the former FBI director and former special counsel delivered what many expected to be his final morning. words on the matter. And the report is my testimony. I would not provide information beyond that which is already public in any appearance before Congress. But that message did not deter House Democrats from issuing a subpoena for his appearance. They're preparing to question Mueller on his decision not to clear the president of obstruction. If we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. Meanwhile, Republicans are looking to turn the tables by calling in to question Mueller's carefully guarded reputation as a straight shooter and the origins of the Russia probe under the Obama administration. I've heard all I need to hear from Mueller. I've read his report. I accept the findings. I don't think it's going to change public opinion. President Trump accused Democrats of attempting a, quote, do-over with the hearing and has long called the investigation a hoax. So you have no collusion, no obstruction, and yet it goes on, and they think this is helping them. I personally think it's hurting them. A lot of people think it's very bad. This will be Mueller's 89th time testifying on Capitol Hill. He's known for his very short and often one-word responses. But ahead of tomorrow's event, the Justice Department sent him a letter saying that he must stay within the boundaries of his report. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, Washington. Well, if you're booking a last minute trip this summer, it is important to double and triple check your accommodations before you book them or else you could find yourself staying in a not so great hotel. Shannon Booth has spent quite a bit of time on the road and in hotels. A few years back while on a tour in a rural part of Indiana, she had quite an unpleasant experience. She says there was urine on the bed and sheets. Hotel management got Booth and her friends to another room, which wasn't much better. Booth never got her money back for that trip, something many people can probably relate to. The key is to do a thorough vetting process before you find yourself in a similar situation. Experts say the star rating of the hotel is important. The more stars, the higher the quality, but don't forget about those reviews either. You book out online, uh, always look at the bad reviews, at the negative reviews, try to investigate on the negative reviews and try to evaluate if they are just someone venting or there is something consistent in those uh, negative reviews. Also, get a good look at the pictures of the hotel and make sure they're not just stock images. Experts say if a hotel uses stock images instead of real pictures, it's a huge red flag and could mean the quality of the hotel is not up to par.
New at 5, we are learning that Indy's newest brewery is scheduled to open August 1st in the Fallon Square neighborhood. Bloomington-based Upland Brewing Company will open Upland FSQ. It will be in an all-ages location with a full-service restaurant that has a lot of Upland beer. Upland FSQ will feature a brewery for tinkering and barrel aging. The bar holds 26 taps. It's located in the 1200 block of Prospect Street, and it will be Upland's first brewery in Indianapolis. Tonight will be a nice night to sit at a brewery. Unbelievable. Yeah, you Outside. can all the restaurants, a lot of people eating lunch outside, yeah, absolutely. The circle, wherever it is. You see the, the harmless clouds behind us. Now, I'll show you where the clouds have built into a couple showers here in a second. As you know me, I'm not confrontational. I don't like to argue, but do you agree with my rating there for the day? I think so. I think perfect. Yeah. Right I, I on saved it. a little wiggle room because you yeah. can always do better, right? So we just came in just under 10 in my book. Maybe you like more heat. It will get warmer later this week without the crazy humidity that we had as we were finishing up last weekend and last week. 81 in Lafayette, a nearby shower. I'll show that to you in a second. Temperatures are cooler in the east. 74 in Richmond, 82 in Terre Haute. There they are, all by themselves, coming into northwest Indiana. I don't see these expanding a whole lot, but I do see them continuing to slide to the south. They'll last maybe half hour, 40 minutes each individual cell. That may build the next one and continue on down the line. Williamsport, Attica, Vetersburg, be on the lookout for some of those. Otherwise, this is what most of us see when we look outside. And what you see now, you won't see later tonight as the sky will clear once again. We're destined back into the 50s. A nice stretch here as humidity is low and these temperatures are really stretching out from morning low to afternoon high. There's your wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Take a look at Franny. She looks like she's just been on a walk and relaxing after that walk. Thanks to Judy Kennedy for sending in the picture. 78 at 7 o'clock, 69 at 11. Kevin.Gregory at WRTV.com. Send me your dog's picture and I'll take them for a walk figuratively during my forecast. We do this again tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, even Friday and Saturday when we warm up a little bit, we're still comfortable. Remember, we had low temperatures as warm as 76 recently. Tomorrow's highs, not much different than today, pushing 80 degrees in most cases, maybe climbing above in a few spots. The wind will be light still out of the north, which means our humidity will be very low, a little bit warmer. We just step it up, but hold on to the sunshine. This theme of clear nights, sunny days, and comfortable temperatures continues. As you see temperatures around 90 over the weekend, that comes with much less humidity than we had last weekend. But as the humidity starts to return, it'll lead to a chance of thunderstorms Monday and Tuesday. But all in all, beautiful stretch of weather. I'm sure Rory is loving all the walks she gets to go on right now. She's just relaxing outside, yes. In the sun. Well, calling all fans of The Bachelor and The Bachelor, the show is going on the road. And Indy is one of the stops. In fact, Indiana native and fan favorite Bachelor Ben Higgins will host the traveling show called The Bachelor Live on stage. It will give audience members the chance to find love in their own community and even has a rose ceremony. Ben will guide The Bachelor in his journey to find love from the first impression rose to group date challenges and the one-on-ones. You can watch it all unfold live live on stage, the challenge for all of the local bachelors is finding love in one night. Ben Higgins delivering this message to bachelor fans. You thought Hannah's season was wild. Well, just wait till me and your bachelor and bachelorette favorites come to a city near you for the biggest bachelor party ever. I'll be your host, so you know it's going to be fun. The Bachelor Live on stage is coming to Clues Memorial Hall in Indianapolis on April 21st. Tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. Sounds like a fun one. And don't forget, you can watch the finale of The Bachelorette this upcoming Monday night only on RTV6. We'll finally find out if Hannah B. finds love after weeks of searching for her potential soulmate. Again, that begins Monday night at 8 p.m. right here on RTV6. Next on the News at 5, the interesting spin on the classic wine and cheese combination. It won't be quite as classy, but it may be just as good. And be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Hello to you. I'm Julie Grant with Court TV, and we're bringing you Gavel to Gavel live coverage of a capital murder trial. It is Florida versus Grant Amato. He could face the death penalty for allegedly killing his own family members. Authorities say the 30 year old killed his mother, his father, and his brother execution style. The motive? 
Prosecutors say that Amato was feuding with his family over his obsession with a webcam girl in Bulgaria that he connected with online through an adult website. His family had also accused him of funneling hundreds of thousands of dollars from his family's bank accounts to spend on this woman whose name is Sylvie. Now Amato is charged with three counts of first degree murder. This morning, trial began with opening statements from both sides. The state presenting its case in chief now, calling witnesses who may or may not be able to uh, forward their theory that Amato did in fact slaughter his family in cold blood, all because of his obsession with this webcam model. We'll continue our live gavel to gavel coverage for you, as well as give you legal analysis on Florida versus Amato right here on Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant, now back to you in the studio. Thanks, Julie, and you can stream Court TV Live anywhere 24-7 at CourtTV.com. Wine and cheese is a classic combination, so naturally, wine and cheese is going to become a thing on social media. People have been posting about their love of eating cheese it's while drinking wine. It's, excuse me, it's Cheez-Its. Kellogg has noticed and they're jumping on the bandwagon. Starting Thursday, the company will offer a combo Cheez-It and wine box. Kellogg is partnering with boxed wine company House Wine to make it happen. You can find the Cheez-It wine combo on the House Wine website starting at 5 Thursday evening. The combo box will go for $25. Kellogg says this is a limited time offer. Interesting. Well, coming up all new at 6, Safe Haven Babies, how many parents have made the heart-wrenching decision to give up their child under Indiana law and where are they now? What we're learning about the effort to save young lives in our state, new at 6. But first on the now, Indy, a rising number of pedestrian deaths in Indianapolis, but advocates say cars or people walking are both not to blame. The changes that could help save lives. You're watching RTV6. Keller. Keller and Keller.